What's going on gamers? Today we're going over how to use and install DecoCraft. Before we get started, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell in order to stay updated on all of our future videos. When playing vanilla Minecraft, you might be wondering, why can't I really get a lot of decoration out of this game? I mean, there's only so many blocks, and to be fair, you can only pretend to sit in a staircase as a chair for so long, without it kind of looking dull and boring. I mean, white couches are cool, but I kind of want more. Well, what do you do? You install DecoCraft. DecoCraft is a super light and super fun decoration type mod to add to Minecraft, and basically anything you can think of in terms of decoration, it probably has. But before we jump into this, you gotta know that you can find any links you need in the description below, whether that be the link to the mod or anything else. Well, let's jump into it. Before you download any mod with the Forge client, you first should install the Forge client. So go check out that tutorial and then come back here when you're done. Once you're done, you're gonna go ahead and type in DecoCraft mod in your search bar in whatever internet browser you use, and the CurseForge link should be one of the first things that appear. Go ahead and select that once you find it, and in this new tab, you're going to scroll down to where you see the dependent mod. You're going to want to note PTR lib for later. So hit files, then you'll scroll down to where you see recent files, and on the far right of that, you'll see view all. Go ahead and select that. From here, you'll be able to check a box that says all versions and it'll drop down the list of all types of versions for this mod. Of course, we're going with the latest 1.12.2 version and I'm just gonna hit the download link and your download should begin. With a PTR lib mod from earlier, I cannot stress this enough, you need this to run the mod so you need to go through the exact same steps to get this downloaded. To install it on your client, the first thing you're going to want to do is open up your Minecraft launcher and select the installations tab at the top. If you've installed Forge correctly, you should see a profile and a folder in that profile once it's highlighted. Select that folder, and a new folder should appear from your windows. Select the mods folder in that folder, and in your downloads, you're going to click and drag the required mods in order to play these mods into that mods folder. Whew. Try saying that five times fast. Anyway, once it's in that mods folder, you're going to be able to head back to your Minecraft launcher, and as long as you're running the right version of Forge, in this case 1.12.2, you can click play. To install it on your server, the first thing you're going to want to do is head to your server panel and click on the red stop button to stop your server. From here, you're going to want to scroll down to the game file, and you're going to want to make sure that you're running the right type of Forge. So click the drop down bar, and if you can't easily find Forge, then go ahead and type in Forge 1.12.2 and the version should show up no problem. Select Change Version. Then, we often recommend creating a new world, but you don't have to, just know that there may be conflicting issues with an old world and a new one. Finally, we would normally click Restart Now, but let's go ahead and hit Restart Later and I'll show you why in a second. So head to FTP File Access on the left hand side. And in your control panel password section, if you've already been here, you can just go ahead and log in with your cache password. Otherwise, type in your password for the panel and hit login. From here, you're going to scroll down to the mods folder that's located right in the center there. Then on the left hand side of that folder, click the upload button. And then you're going to click and drag the downloads into the add files section. Once both of these mods are at 100%, you can scroll up to the top where you see your server's name, and you're going to go ahead and select that to get back to the main page of your panel. Once that loads up, you're going to either start or restart your server to get these changes saved. Honestly, there's not too much to cover in this mod, even though it seems like there are tons of pages of available things. But the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is make the DecoCraft bench, which is basically the crafting table of this version. So what you're going to want to grab is clay, these three types of die, and one crafting table. And this is how we're going to make the bench. So you're going to put the crafting table in the middle, then clay on the bottom, cactus on the left, 
rows on the top and lappies on the right, and that creates the deco bench. From here, you can see there's a pretty cool kind of graphic that shows up whenever you're placing things down in this mod. Once you place it down where you want, you can see there's a whole big list of new items, and they only cost clay, but it's not your typical clay, because it has to be this specific mod version. So how do we create it? Well, we do it by creating it with dirt, sand, and the respective dyes. Once again, you're going to want to get the rose red dye, and you're going to combine it with the dirt and sand, like so, and you'll get red crafting clay. You're going to complete the process with the other types of dyes as well, and once you get done with that, then you're going to have 64 of each respective color. Now, how do you put that into the crafting bench, you might be asking? Well, in the top left of the UI, there's a spot to drop the clay, and you're going to click the down arrow in order to truly insert it into the bench. Once you've completed it with each of the types of clay, you're going to be able to build pretty much anything for little to no cost of the respective clay. It's super cheap and super fun. And something that you may notice is there is a search bar to search specifically for what you might want. For example, look at all this bed stuff that I found just because I typed in the word bed in the search bar. I mean, there's a lot. Separate from that though, there is the tab filter, which allows you to categorize these specific things. For example, in art, you can find this camera. But of course, if you want to continue to scroll through, you can see there's different bathroom things. In fact, for some reason, a hot tub qualifies as a bathroom, but hey, I'm not complaining if it's a hot tub. But of course, once you're ready with all the things that you've selected, then you can go ahead and place them down like so. It's just like any other block, and most of them function the way that you would expect them to if they're beds or seats. Of course, I don't know if I really want this camera looking at me while I sleep, so I might break that. Now let's cover the common issues. The first one is that the mods may not be compatible, and what this means is if you're playing a version for 1.12.2 and those specific mods, then the future worlds or the older game versions even won't work because the mods are not compatible. From here, we'll talk about version mismatch, which is sort of similar. If the game doesn't launch properly or you can't see the mods, it's possible that you're running the wrong version of the game. That's all. Well gamers, this has been pretty interesting to say the least. I mean, all it costs is clay to create all these intricate things that are really kind of well detailed. I mean, look, it's R2-D2 and a big cabinet that actually works to store things. This is something that you definitely want to have if you're playing 1.12.2, so once you're done with your day, you can just sit down and hang out. Well gamers, that'll do it for this video. As always, I hope that you have lots of fun. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more great content like this, then subscribe or click these videos. Until next time, gamers.